a touching story. Here is a tender story my eye fell on some time ago. A little fellow, ten years old, was pulling a heavy cart, loaded with pieces of broken board and lath, taken from some structure which had been pulled down. He was evidently very tired. He wanted to rest himself beneath a shade tree. The little fellow's feet were bruised and sore. His clothing was rags. His face was pinched and pale. And on it was falling that pathetic look of maturity and care you so often see shadowing the faces of children among the very poor. The poor boy lay down on the grass beneath the tree and in a few minutes was fast asleep. His bare feet just touched the curbstone. His old hat fell from his head and rolled onto the sidewalk. And if you had looked into that upturned face, you would have seen printed on it the marks of scanty food, of insufficient clothing, of a childhood untouched, of love and sunshine, of strength too early strained in this sad battle for life. Then a curious thing took place. An old man bowed and poor enough himself, and with a wood saw on his arm, crossed the street for the shade of the same tree. He glanced at the boy, turned away, glanced again, and seemed to read the pitiful writing on the boy's face, and to interpret it from his own experience. Then he went softly, on tiptoe, bent over the boy, took from his pocket his own scant dinner, a bit of bread, and laid it down beside the lad, then walked quickly and quietly away, looking back every moment, but keeping himself out of sight, as though he would escape thanks. But other passers-by had noticed how the sleeping boy, attracted by the kindly maneuvering of the old man, he had said no word whatever. He had simply done his gentle deed and gone on. But now a man walked down from his steps and left a half dollar beside the poor man's bread. A woman came and left a good hat in the place of the old one. A child came with a pair of shoes and a boy with a coat and vest. Others of the passing throng upon the street halted, whispered, dropped dimes and quarters beside the first piece of silver. Suddenly, the little pinched-faced fellow awoke, startled, as if it were a crime to sleep. He saw the bread, the clothing, the money, the score of people waiting with their kindly faces. He saw it was all tangible and not a dream. Then he sat down, covered his thin face with his thin hands, and sobbed aloud. From the old wood sawyer, with pocket empty of his dinner, but with heart filled with kindness, certainly had gone forth a most controlling and loving power, influencing all these helpers of the poor boy of the city streets. And in heaven you will see the far-reaching influence of every good deed you have quietly done. We do not always realize the far-reaching influence of our actions. If we do something kind, it can have far-reaching influence that we could never imagine. If we do something sinful, something unkind, something evil, it can also have such far-lasting influence. May God help us to take notice of the need like this old woodsawyer did.